Hi everyone, this is uh, another part of our henna powder series. Uh, today we're going to be covering uh, Yemeni henna powder. Yemeni henna powder comes packaged uh, like this in the green packaging. And it says 100% pure henna. And it says for use as uh, hair dye. And then uh, my bag is cut open already, so but it says a product of, uh, of Yemen. You can see that it's from Yemen. All right, so this henna powder, I'm going to put some in the, the bag here. Put this in my uh, stainless steel bowl, is uh, what I meant, excuse me. The stainless steel bowl, uh, this is uh, Yemeni henna powder. I'll try to get a good shot with the light on it. Yep, that's Yemeni henna powder. It's a bit more uh, dark, dark, like darker in color compared to all the other henna powders just a bit more like brown brownish basically brownish green and uh, this henna powder does have uh, the least finest sift of uh, all the henna powders that we carry and uh, but definitely compared to the henna powders that you find in the store or on the shelves uh, at like certain um, certain you know marketplaces, th this henna powder still has a better sift than uh, those other henna powders. So um, Yemeni uh, is a really nice henna powder because uh, I found that it stayed consistently like red, and it's nice to have uh, you know a, a nice red because I was finding that. Uh, I was using, um, I was trying Indian henna powder, and I and uh, I also I found it just got like too dark. That one, that was one that I, well, I used probably for at least a year, but then it eventually got just too dark, kind of like aubergine, you know, kind of eggplanty, and I didn't really wasn't into like that tone. And then I uh, tried out Jamila henna powder, and, and that one washed out really nice. It's very creamy and uh, smooth, but it was still like a cool red. It wasn't exactly like the kind tone of red I wanted and um, also with the Yemeni then when I tried that one it was a very consistently red and it, and it stayed consistently red it didn't get too dark and it wasn't too cool it was just uh, it was just right so I really like this uh, henna powder uh, and currently this is part of my uh, natural uh, hair regimen right now and uh, I just I really like this henna powder even though washing it out takes a little bit more work you know, you just got to do what you got to do when it comes to natural hair care, you know, and you, and you love it and you want your hair to be, you know, looking good and uh, you really got to just, you know, do the best you can. And uh, they always say that, uh, I had a friend tell me once that, uh, you know, for beauty, you got to work hard, you know, beauty's not free, you still got to work hard at it, you got to take care of yourself, you got to eat healthy, you got to... You know, use all the products that are gonna um, make your life better, make your skin, your body uh, better, your hair. So, um, back to the Yemeni henna powder. <laughs> so, um, basically, is there anything else I could say about Yemeni? Uh, it's a bit more stringy. Um, you can add different liquids. You know, some people like adding tea brews, uh, herbal teas, coffee, um, regular tea, you know, like a black tea, or water. Uh, I use use mainly I use mainly warm water in my recipe and a splash of lemon juice. I don't use a lot of lemon juice because I find it can be drying. It's not the case for everyone. Le lemon juice or lime juice can work well for a lot of people, but uh, definitely not if your scalp is on the drier side. It's n it's just not gonna work. You know, it's gonna it's gonna make you hate henna. Really, it's gonna make you turn around and, and say, why did I even try this? You know, because herbal hair treatments can be drying on their own. So I like to keep a balance. That's the way I like to live my life is to maintain balance in life. And so I treat my my Yemeni henna powder and all my henna powders that I do use, and just like balance them out. So I use mainly water. You know, and I use some lemon juice. Um, but like let's say you're adding amla powder to your recipe you don't need uh, all that uh, extra acid because uh, amla powder is acidic on its own so if you're worried about dye release you know you have amla powder you can add a splash of lemon juice and use water you know you can be like gentle on your hair so I'm uh, today for time's sake I'm gonna be adding uh, warm water remember your liquid always has to be warm it's my warm water 
There, I'm gonna add some water in. Uh, Yemeni does uh, suck up a lot of, um, let's get a good view there. Yemeni does suck up a lot of water. So it needs a, a lot of extra water. Yeah, let's put the camera over here. Let's see if this, this light over here works better. Ah, yeah, I think this is a bit better. <laughs> The lighting is uh, not natural lighting. It's a little bit dark down here. All right, see it's sucking it up. There we go. This is like mashed potato consistency. If you want to let it sit for dye release, you can let it sit for dye release at this point. See the texture? It's and it's a bit lumpy. You know, a little bit lumpy, but um. This is definitely a mashed potato consistency, and you can let uh, Yemeni henna powder sit out for at least um, one to two hours for hair care um, usage. Up to four hours is fine, but really you don't need to let it sit out longer than that. Um, as for uh, body art usage, uh, there's not a, like a lot of henna artists that use it. Uh, you know, there's other henna powders that are a bit more popular, like. Uh, like Jamila and uh, the organic uh, Rajasthani Indian henna powder that uh, we have that is much more popular because it's you know creamy and well sifted and those are very, really nice henna powders but the Yemeni is, is really nice and uh, red so people do like to add it to their their body art recipe so Yemeni henna powder is a little bit more uh, red tone so some body artists uh, do like to add it to their um, henna powder recipe. Usually with Yemeni for body art, if they are using it for body art, they're actually mixing it either with Jamila or with uh, Indian henna so that the consistency uh, is good and it's not too uh, stringy and it's not too, um, you know, too difficult to work with. This one, if you're going to use it for body art, I, I definitely recommend that you add either Jamila or uh, organic Rajasthani Indian henna powder to this henna powder like half half would be would be good enough as you can see it's pretty um, stringy so it's not always very easy to work with for body art but uh, for hair usage I always uh, do like to recommend uh, you know little tips and uh, hints here as to how to make this easier you know because this is actually a very slippery henna uh, you know henna uh, paste um, I recommend that you put it on damp hair because applying henna, any henna paste for that matter, an herbal hair treatment onto damp hair makes it go on a lot easier rather than putting it on dry hair. So just spritz a little water on there or um, if you really had wanted to wash it beforehand, you can have it freshly washed and wet and you can uh, put it on at that time. Also for hair usage, uh, you're going to leave this in your hair for at least um, three to four hours is a good amount of time to, to leave Yemeni henna paste in your hair. Uh, for body art, you'll probably let it sit out at least six to eight hours, but do uh, the patch uh, test as I had show, shown in like actually my personal uh, henna um, recipe video. I'll show you in that video how to do the little patch test by putting a bit of paste on your palm, leaving it for about a minute, and then if you wipe, when you wipe it off or wash it off, you'll see that it'll be bright like orange, like pumpkin orange, and then you'll know it's ready to use. Also, um, let's see, after, after you leave it on, you can uh, wash it out in the shower or in the tub. Just wash it out really, really well. You'll probably have to... Uh, just really wash it uh, a few times uh, and flip your head and kind of get it all out of your hair and then uh, and then for body art you can kind of cone it up and uh, get ready to use it. Uh, if I've missed anything let me know and I can answer the questions uh, you know via the comments uh, below this YouTube video and uh, you know we'll probably get back to within at least 24 hours and uh, enjoy your Yemeni henna powder it is worth the trouble trust me the Yemeni it is really worth the trouble. You want really red results? This is a very, very good henna powder to, uh, to get. It's very, very popular. One of our most popular henna powders. Okay, thanks. Take care. This is what your Yemeni henna paste will look like after dye release. The texture of this henna powder as a paste is different from the other henna powders. It's much more stringy. 
as you can see the way it falls off it's, it, it kind of just slides off really easily because it's a bit stringy and it still has a few lumps you'll notice that um, when you're mixing henna powder that there will be lumps but as time passes they actually do dissolve and they do disappear some people like using a hand mixer or um, you know to speed up the process or just give it a really you know stir it around really 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 well for me I just like to let it have a natural you know a natural dye release and I don't do anything extra as far as a hand mixer goes I just let it dissolve on its own I and this henna powder also absorbs a lot of water you'll notice that it'll use a lot more water than other henna powders will so you use a bit extra and you can see the dye release especially along the edges you can see that the color has changed from the main the main paste because I've mixed it up so much it's kind of all blended in together this one will probably need a little bit extra water because it's for a hair care recipe so a little bit more water I like to add water personally because I find lemon juice to be a bit drying so I only add a little bit of lemon juice to my henna recipes As you can see, the texture, yeah, you can really see how, it's, how stringy it is and get a good feel for, for what it's like. It's a really good henna powder, though, if you really like red tones and you like consistent red tones. Not red tones that actually will get darker or too deep, you know. I like this one. This is one of my favorite henna powders because it stays consistently red. It's a very, very nice henna powder um, to use. And mind you, it doesn't wash out as nice as Jamila henna powder or a majority of the other henna powders, but over the last couple of years, it has been more finely sifted because the company um, has gained access to another company which they took over that enabled them to get better equipment for their, you know, their packaging and also for, especially for their sifting of their henna powder. So it's much better than it used to be. But you'll still notice like that you'll need to really wash it out really well because it's just it's just very it's just has just a bit of more fibers than the other <coughs> henna powders do.